Well, the Biden administration is getting set to push for an invasion of Haiti, and it's ramping up full steam as President Biden flying to Canada to meet with Justin Trudeau. Among the agenda items is that invasion of Haiti, trying to push Canada for their troops or forces to fly into Haiti so that I guess the United States doesn't have to do that. Meanwhile, the United Nations also separately trying to justify an invasion of Haiti because of human rights abuses, they say, in Haiti. To make sense of all of these moving pieces, we want to bring in Washington correspondent for Redacted, Dan Cohen. Dan, good to see you. So why is President Biden flying to Canada in order to push for this quote-unquote invasion of Haiti? Well, ever since the assassination of President Jovenel Moise in July 2021, the U.S. has planned for a military invasion of Haiti, basically seeing there is an armed movement that is growing and uniting neighborhoods called the Revolutionary Forces of the G9, led by a former police officer named Jimmy Cherizier, uh, nicknamed Barbecue. And of course, we at Redacted have covered um, the, the story of Haiti and, and the G9 um, intensively. And you can see our reporting from back in November when myself and my colleague Kim Ives were on the ground reporting. But the pressure is really ramping up now. We saw this statement from, well, first we have the headline from the Washington Post, which basically, which completely confirms it, that there is a military intervention in the works. The U.S. very much wants it. And now we have a statement from the United Nations High Commission on Human Rights and its spokesperson, Maria Hurtado. Here's the exact quote from her. She says, we call on the international community to urgently consider the deployment of a time bound specialized support force under conditions that conform to international human rights law, et cetera, et cetera. So that's pretty remarkable to me to hear this from the UN High Commission on Human Rights calling for a military invasion of Haiti, especially knowing the, the horrific history of what previous foreign invasions, um, whether by the United States or UN so-called peacekeepers, have wrought on Haiti um, from you know, rape of, of Haitian women and many fatherless children to massacres uh, to this kind of thing. So Biden is going to Canada to meet with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau on uh, Thursday, March 23rd, he's heading out there and apparently he's going to be putting some kind of pressure on Trudeau to carry out this intervention. And there apparently is some kind of hesitance from Trudeau to get fully involved in, in Haiti. Um, two weeks ago, on March 9th, Canada's top general said that the Canadian military is actually stretched thin and that does that it does not have the capacity to carry out this military intervention in Haiti because of what it's doing in Ukraine essentially for the United States. Now, Canada has already sent multiple shipments of armored vehicles to Haiti. Those armored vehicles were instrumental back in November when I was on the ground in Haiti in um, overcoming the barricade that Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier and the G9 had put on the Vero fuel terminal. And um, they had done in order to basically resist U.S. and IMF imposed fuel price hikes. Canada has also sent further shipments of armored vehicles. They've deployed uh, military surveillance aircraft and naval ships to patrol Haiti's coast. And even the Canadian... Uh, military firm Incus, which manufactured those um, armored vehicles, ran a troll farm in order to gin up support for an invasion. And that's something we reported exclusively here at Redacted. So all of this, and the Canadian government says it's stretched thin over Ukraine. And according to Colin Robertson, who's vice president of the Canadian Global Affairs Institute and as a former high-ranking Canadian official who had posts inside the United States, he says to Reuters, quote, the Americans, I think, are reaching a point where they are getting fed up. So it, on one hand, I have to wonder, is it sort of theatrical because there's really no daylight in general on foreign policy in particular between the Canadians and the Americans? But then again, um, it may be that the Americans are really trying to push the Canadians 
to get in line to 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 carry out this invasion because the Americans, the Biden administration knows that any American flag that is, you know, planted down on Haiti is going to be totally rejected. The Haitians do not want any foreign invasion and especially an American invasion of their country. It's amazing moment, right? When there's this maybe self-awareness now that we've got, we're, we're trying to push our, we're trying to push our imperialism onto other countries to carry it out on our behalf. But I do love the response that you just mentioned from the Canadians, or at least the reports about their involvement in Ukraine is why they're stretched so thin. Because according to the reports I've read from the global affairs um, in Canada, there are only 24 deployed officers in Ukraine as of as of early 2022. And in I mean, how many more since then? 24, 24 soldiers. So can it, Canada's army military is stretched thin because of 24 people in Ukraine. Somebody's not telling the truth. Yeah, it does seem uh, a little bit fishy. I don't know. I mean, maybe maybe, you know, Biden's going to go there and pressure Trudeau to ramp up military spending, you know, like get up to that all the all the NATO members have to spend what at least two percent, and I don't right. think Canada is there. So um, maybe it is. You know, it's it, it's really hard to tell. Is this is this sort of theatrical where it's you know Biden saying, "Oh, we really need you to go do this," and Trudeau saying, "Oh, well, I don't know. You know, we don't want to be involved in appearing hesitant right. um, in order to kind of de-emphasize the overtly imperialist um, you know aggression that." Right would be this military intervention. Um, you know, I do think one of the interesting aspects is Haiti is totally awash in violence. Um, Maria Hurtado, the, the UN High Commission spokesperson on human rights spokesperson, cited the deaths of something like 500 people, um, 500 Haitians at the hands of, uh, b because of gang violence to justify her call for military intervention. But the thing is, much of this violence, particularly since January, has been perpetrated by a gang leader and, and his group named uh, Vitalom Innocent. And he's been the primary kidnapper this year and gang leader who's been clashing with the police, who's been killing innocent people. The thing is, he used to have a relationship with a political party um, called the Democratic and Popular Sector, which is led by a politician named Andre Michel. Andre Michel and his party are a uh, mainstay of the de facto prime minister Ariel Henry's party, of his coalition rather. So when the basically political appointments were handed out, this guy, Vitalom Innocent, got shafted. He got the short end of the stick. He wasn't given essentially the political power he wanted, and so he's gone on a rampage ever since and become the most prominent killer and criminal in Port-au-Prince and pretty much in all of Haiti. But all of for all of this talk about gang violence and people being killed, the intervention is not aimed at him. It is aimed at one of his rivals, Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier, who is Hmm. Um, you know, smeared as a gang leader, right. but is not a gang leader at all. And in fact, he's the only so-called gang leader that any of the Western press can go sit down and interview. And, you know, like we talked about, we reported uh, weeks ago, the AP can just show up at his at his neighborhood and demand an interview. And he even granted it to him. So um, this guy, Vitalom, has been completely terrorizing uh, swaths of Port-au-Prince. His men even overtook um, the neighborhood of, of Petionville, which is the wealthy suburb or wealthy area above Port-au-Prince. It's, it's almost like, like in Los Angeles, if, you know, gangs that were fighting in South Central, um, in poor neighborhoods went and, you know, one of them went and took over Beverly Hills. So, so it is major, it is a major development that this happened in Petionville, um, above Port-au-Prince, but nonetheless, the one person who this is really aimed at, this intervention, is the guy who's under U.S. sanctions, EU sanctions, Canadian, U.K., and U.N. sanctions. That is Jimmy Barbecue Ch Cherizier. None of the other so-called gang leaders are under sanctions like him, and the U.S. has repeatedly directly threatened him. So 
there's a sort of irony um, of, of who the Biden administration wants to target or wants Canada to target on its behalf. Well, we'll see. So President Biden in Canada meeting with Justin Trudeau. One of the agenda items is this invasion of Canada or invasion of Haiti. It, it's also an invasion of Canada as well. Um, we'll see if uh, Canada bites on this and what sort of troops they they will align and bring to, to bring to Haiti and what the United Nations does on this as well. Dan, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. And thanks for staying on top of this story for us. Thanks a lot, Clayton. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at Redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to Redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.